All right, here's the fourth letter in Love Letters to the Dead. Still muted tones because it is 123. Dear Elizabeth Bishop, I want to tell you about two things that happened in English today. We read your, we read your poem and I talked in class for the first time. I've been in high school for two weeks now, and so far I've been spending most of the period looking out of the window, catching the birds flying between phone wires and twinkling aspens. I was thinking about this boy, Skye, and wondering what he sees when he closes his eyes when they heard my name. I looked up. A bird's wing started beating in my chest. Mrs. Buster was staring at me. Laurel, will you read? I didn't even know what page we were on. I could feel my mind going blank. But then Natalie leaned over and flipped my Xerox to the right poem. It started like this. The art of losing isn't hard to master. So many things seem filled with the intent to be lost that their loss is no disaster. At first I was so nervous. But while I was reading, I started listening and I just understood it. Lose something every day. Accept the fluster of lost door keys, the hour badly spent. The art of losing isn't hard to master. Then practice losing farther, losing faster, places and names and where it was you meant to travel. None of these things will bring disaster. I lost my mother's watch, and look, my last, or next to last, of three loved houses went. The art of losing isn't hard to master. I lost two cities, lovely ones, and vaster, some realms I owned, two rivers and a continent. I missed them, but it wasn't a disaster. Even losing you, the joking voice, a gesture I love, I shan't have lied. It's evident the art of losing is not too hard to master, though it may look like. Write it like disaster. I think my voice might have been shaking too much, like the poem earthquaked me. The room was dead quiet when I stopped. Mrs. Bester did what she does, which is to stare at the class with her big bug eyes and say, What do you think? Natalie glanced in my direction. I think she felt bad because everyone was looking not at Mrs. Buster, but at me. So she raised her hand and said, well, of course she's lying. It's not easy to lose things. Then everyone stopped looking at me and looked at Natalie. Mrs. Buster said, why are some things harder to lose than others? Natalie had a no duh sound in her voice when she answered, because of love, of course. The more you love something, the harder it is to lose. I raised my hand before I could even think about it. I think it's like when you lose something so close to you, it's like losing yourself. That's why at the end, it's harder for her to write even. She can hardly remember how, because she barely knows what she is anymore. The eyes all turned back to me, but after that, thank God, the bell rang. I gathered my stuff up as quickly as I could. I looked over at Natalie, and she, and she looked like maybe she was waiting for me. I thought this might be the day that she would ask if I wanted to eat lunch with her and I could stop sitting at the front. But Mrs. Buster said, Laurel, can I talk to you for a moment? I hated her then because Natalie left. I shifted in front of her desk. She said, how are you doing? My palms were still sweaty from talking in class. Um, fine. I noticed that you didn't turn in your first assignment. The letter? I stared down at the fluorescent light reflected in the floor mumbled. Oh yeah, sorry, I, I didn't finish it yet. All right. I'll give you an extension this time, but I'd like you to get it to me my next week. I nodded. Then she said, Laurel, if we ever need to talk to anyone. I looked up at her blankly. I used to teach at Sandia, she said carefully. May was in my English class her freshman year. My breath caught in my chest. I started to feel dizzy. I counted on no one here knowing, but at least no one talk or at least no one talking about it. But now Mrs. Buster was staring at me like I could give her some kind of answer to an awful mystery. I couldn't. Finally, Mrs. Buster said, She was a special girl. I swallowed. Yeah. And walked out the door. The noise in the hallway changed into the loudest river I've ever heard. I thought maybe I could close my eyes and all of the voices would carry me away. Yours, Laurel.